everyone, I'm Vishnavi from class 7 and today we are going to start with a new topic of New Kings and Kingdoms that we have started. So, in the previous class we discussed a lot of things like the Tripathi struggle and before that we studied the emergence of New Kingdoms. And if you haven't watched those videos, the link is in the description box, you can check out there. So, starting with a new struggle or we can say a new kingdom. Sharing my screen for more information. Here is my screen and where you can see a lot of things such as new kings and kingdoms and the big idea of this chapter. So the big idea of today's video is Gurjara Pratiharaj means it's a kingdom. Means emergence of new kings and kingdoms. In that topic itself we have the Gurjara Pratiharaj. So let's move on the slide. Next slide. We are going to study the second concept, the learn concept of new kings and kingdoms. So today's learning objective will be the second one, learning concept of the new kings and kingdoms. Let's go to the further slides. Like we have discussed the introduction, Emergence of new kingdoms, Tripathi struggle, and now we are on the Gurjara Pratiharas. So, the first thing that we have to discuss in this topic is about a kingdom. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is made by kings, right? And that's why it is known as the kingdoms. So, a kingdom in the Western India, where the map in the Western India we say Rajasthan, right? So, in Rajasthan itself and many parts of central Rajasthan also, there was a kingdom and it was known as Gurjara Pratiharaj. And why do you think that these kingdoms means all, almost all the kingdoms want to be at the seacoast area? Now, the answer for it is for trading. For trading, actually they can do anything and they can conquer more parts of their region to conquer the seacoast area and then when the seacoast area is being conquered by them they do the trading with other countries the other country of gujara pratiharas of trading was arab incursions so in the arab incursions we have a lot of things that we have to discuss so in the Arab inclusions, it means in the Arab regions. The Arab regions are mostly near and after the seacoast, right? So they have to be near the seacoast areas to be uh, to be for the trading with the Arab inclusions. Now, if you see a lot of things in the Arab inclusions, you see that they are on the seacoast area, right? And also they have a very long line if they are behind the seacoast area. For example, you are in a class and then a teacher is teaching you. So, there would be a particular period of time that teacher will teach you. We can say there was a session. Yes, we say a particular time as session, right? So, a session of 30 minutes would be there for another teacher and another teacher will then come and, and her time will be 30 minutes to teach. And in the same way, we have the ruler's long line also. But the ruler's long line it is a bit different, different from this example. For example, you have a lifeline. If a lifeline is there, let me draw a lifeline in front of you. So, we see a lifeline like this. When we born, we start from here, from our birthday date. Right? For example, we are born... Uh, for example, if we are born in 2009. So, it is not necessary that we actually stay in on this earth till 2010. It is not possible that we can be at our house at 2011, right? So, we have different, different types of things in our lifeline too. When we are born, we are in the hospital. When we are a bit grower, we are actually in our house and when we are very big we go to college or school right so that is only in a long line also of powerful rulers first a ruler is being born means the 
the ring of that ruler is started then slowly slowly and slowly it starts to conquer different different types of states it conquers the whole country also it can conquer the whole country also and the country okay and sorry my uh you can say it is so it can follow the states also and it can actually conquer the countries also which means that it has also a long line of its rule right when it rules it has a long line for example the powerful ruler such as nagabatta one and now who is nagabatta one let's understand it nagabatta one is a ruler of gurjara pratihara dynasty and he had a life a long line from 750 to 780 ce -E. -E. these both are in ce -E, okay and so it has a this much long line of this founder we can say why he is known as the founder of this dynasty now he is known as the founder of this dynasty because actually he has found this dynasty and so he has the ring from this from this now we have two more king uh, two more kings of this dynasty which are but sarja and bhoja so let's study about them also mihir bhoja from 836 ce to 890 ce establish the establish the largest empire in the north india now if it is asking the question that which ruler of the gurjara pratiharas has the had the largest empire in the north in india so you can directly tell the answer as mihir bhoja now the second thing is he had his capital as Kanoj. Now, in the previous class in the Tripati struggle, we discussed about the Kanoj that was pretty important, right? And why it is important, we discussed it in very brief. So, over here we can discuss that the, the capital of this king or this ruler was Kanoj itself. And now as the Kanoj is its capital, he has a long empire too. And that is why he has the largest empire in northern India. He issued silver coins. Now, when a king or a ruler becomes very rich, he starts to be selfish and he also starts to be uh, uh, not actually angry, we can say, right? And Mihir Bhoja had the same issue. When he started being, had a large empire, then the capital of him was Kanoj. That, that is why he issued silver coins also. And because he was devotee of Varaha, means the incarnation of Lord Vishnu, he actually issued those silver coins with the mark of Vishnu. Over here, we can see the coin, which is Varaha coin. And this is the, uh, we can see the architecture of the Varha on this coin. So we see that Meher Bhoja is a devotee of Lord Vishnu. Then we can see had the largest empire in North India. Then we can also see the Kanoj was the capital of Meher Bhoja. And we can say he had the largest empire and also he is known as Adivaraha because he had the coin of Varaha also and he had the Adivaraha as his name too. Now the last thing about this point is the Gurdwara Pratiharas were also great patrons of learning and literature. Now learning and literature is actually the thing which we can learn from them. So, the history tells us a lot, right? And it also tells us different types of in inscriptions that were written by the kings and ki kingdoms, rulers and many other people. So, in Gujara Pratiharas, they were actually the great patrons of learning and literature. And so, Rajashekhar, the Sanskrit poet, was patronized by 
Pratihara rulers. Now, hope you have listened the name of Sanskrit poet whose name is Rajashekhara, and then what he uh, from where he has learned the uh, learning and literature literature from where he has took that knowledge he has taken from the pratihara rulers now pratihara rulers are very patronized in these things that's why they teach also some people So, we have learned over here that Gurjara Pratiharas were the great patrons of learning and literature. So, actually they will teach people also. And so, today we have learned the Gurjara Pratihara topic. Now, in the next class, we will do a next topic which will be the Palas. And the Palas are pretty easy like this topic itself. And so, I wanted to explain that topic also in today's video but actually uh, what you guys do is just watch the video for one minute but I'm not blaming you at all. It's okay if you don't have time you can watch uh, you cannot watch the video if you have time you can watch the full video. That's why I am start uh, like I have started to create very small videos for you all but it's okay I am not going to do the palas in today's session we'll do the palas in the next session. And I cannot leave you all without any type of recapitulation, right? As we do the recapitulation in every class. So, let me share the screen for you all in which we are going to do the recapitulation. So, in today's recapitulation, first we are going to discuss that what we have done in Gurjara Pratiharas. Today's recap was about Gurjara Prati Haraz. Okay. And in Gurjara Prati Haraz, we learned we learned that they had long line long line of ruling when what they had was Nagabhatta one was the founder of this dynasty. Then we actually discussed about Meher Bhoja had the largest empire largest empire in North India. And He issued silver, silver coins of Varaha Mark Ben. Varaha actually means, let me write in the bracket, Lord Vishnu. Okay. So, these things we did in today's class and also one more thing we did was, he was known as, known as Adi Varaha. We have to just learn these points, Adi Varaha. Next thing is about Deva, patrons of learning and literature now this is only a recap for today and let me put the screen over here you can just copy this thing or we can say these things from your screen and then we are just going to do the palas in the next session so for today we have this session with you all thank you everyone and bye bye and now it's the time to say you bye-bye and stay home, stay safe and don't forget to learn this topic also. Bye.